coming up next on Button to Christ Ministries. Does our life represent Christ? When we go out there, do people see Christ in us? When we walk out there, do people look on you and say, there goes a prayer warrior. There goes a man of God, a woman of God. Stay tuned. Thank you, thank you. Just want to welcome everyone who is here. Praise the Lord, I seen Brother Chana. And I heard I was coming in and heard Brother Andrew speaking about Sister Ioni. And we just want to welcome Sister Chana. God of a mighty work. Mighty word tonight. Just want to welcome all those who are online. Who are watching live and those who are calling in on the on the line the telephone line from different countries we just want to welcome you and you know we really need all the help we can get you know um, I was looking and say we need a switcher and the and the the technical team there so I saw brother Milton we were waiting for brother and Anthony to put him on the switching board, but we couldn't, he got here a little bit late, so we put Brother Milton, so we can switch, he's the switcher that switched the different cameras. And uh, so, you know, we just need a lot of help, you know, so as when you're here in the sanctuary, you're on duty. So, you know, if you notice, there's a camera over there, and even when we cross, we have to watch, I know they're gonna share more about the camera, that we are setting up the cameras, we are trying different range, we are trying different things. We want to make sure our viewers are seeing everything clearly because we have a lot of viewers viewing from different countries and they awaits the program. So we just want to get the different shots from different angles. We want to make sure we are getting to you, you are hearing the word. God have a mighty work to do tonight. What do you say, Sister Augustine? Praise the Lord. Sister Dell here. Praise the Lord. God is awesome. God is awesome. So anyway, I was really praying and I had a word in mind. And, you know, I should learn by now. I had a word in mind how I'm going to present this word and I'm looking over the word. And just in the afternoon, close to the evening here, the Lord gave me a word and says, no. You must wait on me, you know. And uh, it just taught me again that every time is strictly about waiting on the Lord and allowing God to work through us. So the Lord gave me three priors of the Bible. There's many priors, but there's three significant priors of the Bible that is very significant that God wants to show us. And there's lessons to be learned from these prayers of how these men of God pray until something happens. Pray until answers come. And that's what the church is lacking. How to pray fervent prayers. How to see God work in these last days. Because we go to church, we do all these things, but we are not seeing the power of God working in our lives. We are not seeing people coming up in wheelchair and being prayed for and walk away. We don't believe this thing because there's too many fake healers out there. So we are so cautious that we don't really believe that these things can happen again. You know what I mean? We don't really believe. We, we just believe that all different things is happening and no. God is still on the throne and there's still power in prayer and God have his people still. Well, we're going to venture and talk about three powerful men of prayer. Let us pray right now as we open up. Let's pray. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, great God, we just want to thank you and praise you and exalt you because there's none like you. 
I just pray, O oh God, that you will reconsecrate the sanctuary of God. Touch everyone that is watching from their homes. Everyone who is driving, who are listening on the prior line. Many people from different countries, from UK and from Jamaica, from our home church, Ajax, SDA, anywhere your people are, O oh God, and are watching and, and, and seeking your face, Lord, please draw nigh unto us right now. Hide me, O oh God, beneath the cross. Let only Jesus Christ alone be seen. Please, O oh God. I'm nobody. As David says, I cannot even speak. Moses, Lord, I am nobody. But Lord, you are God. Work your power through me, O God, so that your people will be blessed and hearts will be lifted and your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, O God, as you touch my lips now with that live pole from heaven. And I just want to praise you, exalt you, and worship you now. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Praise God, praise God. God is truly awesome and powerful. The first prayer, so there's three incredible prayers that the Lord showed that should be presented here. And the first prayer is the prayer of Jabez. And that is found in First Chronicles chapter 4. And I'm reading two verses, 9 and 10. So turn with me there and have a marker in your, in, in your book. Just mark these pages and underline it if you wish. Because... The word is going to speak to you tonight. So it's First Chronicles chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 9 and 10. And it says, And Jabez was, was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear his, him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my course, and that mine hand might be with me, that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. A lot of people heard about Jabez prior. We've done it, and all my life I've been hearing, everybody's just praying, enlarge my territory. That's all they want to say. Oh my, his mother was in pain and was in grief, and they bore me out of grief. Enlarge my territory, Lord. And you go to pray and your prayer is, enlarge my territory. The Lord is showing me something completely different. As a matter of fact, what the Lord showed me, it had nothing to do with evil territory. You see, in Chronicles, we are introduced to Judah's descendant. Very prominent one. And this one is Jabez. A man we should pay attention to. A man of true honor. If you are ever felt like you are in pain, or you want to give up, or you don't believe in God, just take a look at Jabez. If your life is tough, just go through Jabez and how Jabez dealt with this thing. Don't be stuck, as I said, and enlarge my territory. Like this is the only thing. I want to point your attention to the fact that Jabez cried out to God of Israel. He cried out because of what he was going through. But to me, the focus was how that Jabez was 
honorable. If you look up the word honorable, there's so many things meaning to honorable. I look it up and I got he was honest, moral. He was ethical. He was principled. He was righteous. He was right-minded, full of integrity. This was a high office given. When they call you honorable so-and-so, it was because of the office, high office. It meant that this man, we have to look on his life. If you want God to enlarge your territory, it has to do with how you're living, your everyday life, your relationship with God. It wasn't about his prior saying, enlarge my territory. No. If you notice, the Lord answered his prayer right away. Then you got to go back and say, why aren't our prayers being answered? Because we are not living honorable lives. Our lives are corrupt. Our lives are not right. And that's why we are not getting answers to prayer. You see, the focus for many people is about what I need. I was in pain and my mother was poor. Enlarge my territory. Bring me some property. Bless me, O oh God, indeed. Our focus is always on that. But the Lord is showing me that our focus should be the honorable, our life. Does our life represent Christ? When we go out there, do people see Christ in us? When we walk out there, do people look on you and say, there goes a prayer warrior. There goes a man of God, a woman of God. What makes you a woman of God? What makes you a man of God? What makes you a man of God? Is it by just praying? What was Jabez like before? He was different, it says, from all the other brethren. He stood out. Do we look different when people look at you? They know that you're a man of God, a woman of God. The integrity, your harness in everything, in your workplaces. When the Christian eyes are not on you, when you're not among 70 Adventists, how do people see you? When you're gone back home, how do you treat people? Are you honorable? Do they respect you? When you go to the hospital, do you go and pray and encourage and love people? Can God see you as honorable? The man of God, this is a powerful prayer. Because he's connected to the power and he's going through things, he's able to go to God and say, Lord, increase me, Lord. Increase my territory. Enlarge me. Bless me indeed, I pray. It's easy for the Lord to answer. If we have obstacles and blockages within our lives, if we go to the mercy seat, God cannot answer us because the great accuser of the brethren is there and he's saying, how can you bless him? And he's stealing how can you bless him and he's not paying tithes and offering? How you, can you bless him and he don't love you? He's gossiping and biting with others. He's on the phone every day talking evil. How can you bless him? How can you say that's a honorable man or a woman? No. Jabez went to God. And he prayed because he's right-minded. He's not thinking things about people, how to pull you down, how to put you down. He's full of integrity. He, he stands by words. He's a man of his word. Anything he said he's going to do, he do it. He don't make promises and you don't see him for five years and say he's a man of God. 
The devil have no reason. He could not be a blockage. The devil could not be an hindrance in the man of God. Because he was upright. He was living the right way. He was blameless. He was holy. He was an example. He was living in the word of God. How can God answer your prayers? How can God answer us? How can God declare and say, have you tried my servant Job? Because Job was living right. It's not because he, he was, everything was taken from him. When you go through your different issues, it doesn't mean that God is not there with you. Some of us go through issues because of the tests. But God is saying, if we pray like Jabez, to pray like Jabez, we have to have that lifestyle. You cannot come and pray, enlarge my territory. No wonder we have so many prayers that is not being answered. We are using enlarge my territory, but we forgot. We haven't seen that he was honorable. We want to pray like Job, but we haven't heard when the Lord said to the devil, have you tried my servant Job? God have the confidence in Job. He have the confidence in Jabez. And God is saying, if you have the confidence in God and you trust him and we are living right, anything we ask God for, he will do it. A lot of the churches, a lot of people in the church is not living right. That's why we are not seeing answers to prayer. There's not many Jabez in the churches. There's not many Job. Because as soon as things start to go bad, people start to curse God. Where is God? Praise God, I'm not God. Because I'd be like, depart from me. But God is such a loving God that even though we do these things, he opens his arms and wants to invite you in. What a loving God we serve. What a God we serve. When you look at Jabez, prayed, Jabez prayed and said, Lord, enlarge my territory. This is the most amazing prayer. The man prayed and said, enlarge my territory. And God answered right away. I have some people say, God is not fair. I don't know where Jabez comes from. Nobody knows this man. He just pop out of nowhere and pray a short prayer. And God answers him. What about some of us fasting for three and four days and praying and getting no answers? Some people talk to me and say, it's not fair. What did Jabez do? Who is he? They did not see the word honorable. A holy man. A righteous man. A man who lived right. Integrity. A man who stand up to the principles, who follow the commandments. A man who read the words daily, study the word of God. Mercy. There is a time for everything. You don't see the hours that that man spent. I remember when the Lord was calling the disciples. And when, I, I don't remember the disciples' name, somebody can remind me. When he came and the Lord says, I saw you under the, the oak tree. Nathaniel, yeah. He said, I saw you. That's when he said, wow. When I was doing my devotion, it's going to pay off. If nobody sees you when you're doing your devotion, the Lord sees you. There's a lot of Jabez around still in this sanctuary right now. Somebody's saying, I'm going through a hard time. But I'm in the word anyway. I don't know when it's going to pay off, but I'm in the word anyway. God is saying, listen, there is a lot of Jabez in this place. I'm telling you, God is saying something is about to happen. I want to go to the next prayer. That's the first prayer. I want you to go to our favorite, Psalms 3. And listen, I did not plan it, you know. I did not tell the Lord, Lord, we, 
Psalms 3 is one of our favorite, and we have been reading Psalms 3 all the time. Could you just show me what to do concerning Psalms 3? No. I did not go to God and say that. But do you know anything about Psalms 3? I know we use Psalms 3, and it's one of the powerful deliverance prayer. If you want to be set free, David, pray this prayer. But I want to tell you something. David was in distress. And you know the Lord showed us that if we learn how to pray like David and read the Psalms and pray, we're going to see huge breakthroughs. But how many of us do that? How many of us read the Psalms and really spend a day where we go through the Psalms? We're not talking just read the Psalms and just done, no. If you listen to us praying for people, we'll tell somebody to read the Psalms five, six, seven, eight times, the same Psalms three. And sometimes when they get to the eighth time, the deliverance start to come. Everything start to change in the room where they are. We've done it several times on the telephone. It's powerful. But I'm going to tell you a little thing about, about this Psalms. You know, David was going through a difficult time. And we spoke about that, that Nathan came and told him that the Lord knows what you did. You set up the man and kill him to take his wife. And David was going through a difficult time. Just like some of us right now, we're going through a difficult time. But David knows how to turn to God. Even if the man is in the gutter, he knows that there's no other way but through Jesus Christ. But it seems like we don't get it. Sometimes we're going through some things, we've gone everywhere. We've gone to the doctors, we've gone everywhere. You know, I was talking to a, a lady this week. And she was telling me about her pain she's feeling. And she said she worked with the doctors. So I said, did you take any medication? She says, from what I'm seeing with the medications, I ain't taking any. She said, what I see going on in, 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 in the medical field, she said, she's shaking her head and said, I wouldn't even want to tell you. Mercy. This is somebody working the profession saying that to me just a couple of days. Yeah. David was going through something and he turned to the Lord. No matter what, he's going through depression, pain, and guilt. And he decides, I'm going to turn to God. God wants us to turn to him. And hear what he says now. I'm going to read verse by verse. Verse, Psalms 3 is a prayer. David was praying it. He was praying this prayer. And I want to tell you um, something about that. Before I go to that, I want to just probably tell you a little bit about Psalms 51. If you notice the top of Psalms 51, the reading that is similar. It's around the same time when David was going through something. You can look at Psalms 51 and see that David was going through something. David talked to God when he's going through something. He talked to God about his enemies. I'm telling you, David is a man after God's own heart. And he was going through something, and hear what he did. He went to God, and if you look in verse 1, he cried for God's mercy. There's nobody else that's going to give us mercy. The devil wants us dead. But if we take a little, a little example and just look at David's life, he's going through something, he called for God's mercy. And he call out because he knows that only God can blot out his sin. And we have a sin problem. Because if we are not washed by the blood, deliverance cannot come. He knows that he needs to be delivered. 
from this guilt and pain and shame that he was going through for killing the man for his wife. So he knows that. In verse 2, he asked God for washing and cleansing. We need Holy Ghost power to wash us and cleanse us if we want to be delivered. David recognized that. So he asked for washing and cleansing. In verse 3, he acknowledged and confessed before God. He just said, Lord, I mess up. You know already, I should have known better. But sometimes we are carried away by emotions. I'm telling you. It's a serious thing. A lot of the men in the churches are falling because of women. I'm telling you, there's something. It's like magnet. You know, I'm telling you, the, the, the church, the immoral, it's, it's destroying the church. It's a hard sin. We have to pray without ceasing. He recognized it and he acknowledged it and said, Lord, I mess up. And he said, Lord, in verse, chapter, verse 4, when I sin... I sin against you. It's not even me. I am a man of God. And when I sin, I'm going against you, God. I need your help. When we acknowledge these things, the Lord will help his people. We have to come to terms with it and acknowledge it. In verse 5, it's, he says, I am evil from birth. I was conceiving evil, Lord. But this is no excuse, Lord. I just have weaknesses. I need your help. He acknowledged before God. In verse 6, he said, Lord, teach me. I am willing. I am foolish, Lord. Just teach me your ways. That's how David come before God after he messed up. He said, Lord, I'm foolish. Teach me your ways. Teach me. In the next verse, he says, purge me. He said, Lord, the only way I can survive... Unless I get a purging and a washing from inside. Unless, oh God, you create in me a clean heart. Do a change in me. I want to be white like snow. I want to change, Lord. He goes on to tell the Lord to restore him. To give him a, a good heart. And to teach him and to deliver him. All of these powerful things in Psalms 51. David went to the Lord and said, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Change me, oh God. Only your power can do it. If we don't go to God with our heart, if we want to get rid of sin, if we don't recognize that the connection is a sin problem, if we don't go to God with the energy, David went to God and he cried out for mercy. We're not crying out. We're not getting answers to prayer because David went to God. Listen, he was in trouble. Let's go to Psalms 3. Go back to Psalms 3. When David talked to God, everybody was up against David because he'd done wickedly. He committed murder. Blood was on him. And when David says, look in verse 1, it says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. David was telling God, the problem is too big for me. There's too many people against me, Lord. Do you feel like people are against you? Do you feel like you have families and friends against you? David says, he was just pour out his heart to God and his soul. And say, Lord, there's too many people against me, Lord. I need some help. He did not go to the doctor's. He did not go to see the psychiatrist and the physician and say, I need some counseling. He goes to God. That's what the Lord is saying. Instead of going and loading up with the medication, God is saying, come to me. He poured out. In verse 2 it says, Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. They, the crowd was, was mocking him. He said, many say God want, don't want to help him anymore because he's too evil. They was putting guilt on him. God can't help him. It's too late. He's a killer. He's a murderer. Has people ever put you down and say you're too sinful? That's why you can't get a job. He was pouring out to God. 
he was pouring out. The people was on him. And he was telling the Lord everything. He said, many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. There is no help for him. You've gone too far now. You're too sick. You have stage five cancer. You're going to die. There's no more help for you in God. They were telling him, there's no help for you. But listen what verse 3 says. But, he said, but, mercy. David is praying. The people are mocking him and say, you're done. You're a murderer. You're a killer. But he said, he prayed, Brother Chan, and he said, but, mercy. He said, but, let me read it. He said, but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, mercy. My glory and the lifter up of my head, mercy. So it meant that they were mocking him that he couldn't put his head up. The shame and the disgrace. But he cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, you are my shield. It meant that you are my security. You are my defense. You are my soldiers. You are, you are, you are my ambassador. You are everything to me, oh God. Help me. His head was down. He said, Lord, you are my shield. You are my lifter up. It's only your strength can cause me to get up and hold my head high. It's only you, God. I'm telling you, he was giving his all. I don't know how many of us give our all when we come to the mercy seat. We come so passive because we don't believe. If we recognize the power of David, a man of God, no wonder the Lord says, David is a man after my own heart. It's because he's repented. He recognized that when a Christian falls seven times, he must get up and come to the mercy seat. God is saying we need to get up. We're going through too much. We're going through poverty. We're going through sicknesses. God's people need to get up and start to pray up. God is saying, listen, we can't be any weakling. You know what I'm saying? We can't. God's people need to get together. Hello, somebody. And listen, he prayed. But Lord, there's no other help. You are my shield. He cried out. He wants a breakthrough. He wants his head to be lifted up. He wants to regain confidence. He wants the pain and the guilt to leave. You are the lifter up. When last have you prayed like that? When last have you been through trials? Does it mean that God has to take you through the trial before the victory? Do you? Or you want the victory first? Look on the next verse. Verse 4, it says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Mercy. The Lord heard him out of his secret place. It's like he called out like Psalms 91. When he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall dwell, shall stay under that shadow. God is saying, I want to move you into the pavilion. I want to move you into my hiding place where I will give my angel charge over you. He cried out and said, Lord God, hear me. He cried loud. God is saying to us, we need to pray out loud and cry out in prayer. How do you cry out like David? Cry from your knees, fall on your knees. Tell the Lord what you're going through. He is able to break it. The God that we serve is able. We are not crying out loud enough. I guess we are not going through anything then. Some people are going through so much, but they refuse to pray, pray, pray. They refuse to cry out and depend on God. He's saying, depend on me, and I will deliver you. God wants to deliver his children. If you look to verse 5, he says, I lay me down and sleep. I awaken, for the Lord sustained me. After David cried out 
God gave him peace. God gave him rest. He said, I was able to go and lay down. When we cry out to the great I am, who is the I am? He's able to give us the peace and the rest. Only God can give us that peace and rest. David cried out. And he was able to get a good night's sleep. When last have you had a good night's sleep? When last have you had rest? When last have you gone to bed in peace? Because David cries out. He cried out. And hear what he says in verse 6. Mercy. His confidence is coming up. Mercy. His confidence. Hear what he says then. He says, I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people that have set themselves against me round about. Lord of mercy. Mercy. After he woke up in the morning and he seen that the Lord gave him peace and rest through the crying and the prayer. Then he says, I will not be afraid. No more afraid of numbers of people. No matter what you're going through, God is saying there's more power. Fear may think it's big. A lot of people struggle with fear. But he says, I will not. He said it with confidence in prayer. When last have you prayed with confidence? I will not be afraid of 10,000 that come against me. I am no more afraid because the Lord is on my side. Hallelujah. Verse 6, it says, I will not be afraid. Verse 7. Then he says, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast submitted all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. The Lord defeated your enemy. He was claiming victory through Jesus. He was claiming that my prayers have been answered. Hallelujah. Then it says, salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. God's people have the power. God's people have the blessings. I'm going to go through the last prayer to close. I want you to turn with me to Jonah. Jonah. God is a powerful God. God is a powerful God. You know the testimony about Jonah. You know everybody knows about Jonah and the whale swallowed him. God is saying, listen. He warned Jonah. He called unto Jonah. And Jonah waited until the last minute before he prayed. He waited until he hit rock bottom before he prayed. God is saying we need to learn a lesson from this. We need to start to pray now. Don't wait until you get into the bottom of the well. Mercy. Look, I will read verse 2 to 9 alone. And hear what it says. And it says, and said, I cried. No, no, let's go from verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Mercy. We're talking about the prayer of Jonah. We're not going to the story what led him there. God is saying this is a SOS prayer. And if God's people learn to pray before you get into the bottom of the whale, deliverance will come. Don't wait until it's too late. Hear what it says. And it says, And said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell. Cry I, and thou heardest my voice. Mercy. I think the Lord has to bring some people down into the bottom of nowhere in order to get us to listen to God, in order for us to be obedient to God, in order for us to confess. And he says, For thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the sea, and the floods come past me about. All thy billows and thy waves pass over me. Mercy, mercy, you don't get it. He was, God 
allow him to feel the whale going through the wave and bouncing. He was like on a turbulent flight. Mercy. He was describing it in prayer and said, Lord, I felt the wave. I know what I'm going through, Lord. Life is rough. God has to bring some people down in order for them to pray. God is encouraging us tonight to pray before you get to the bottom. Pray when you're on the top. Don't wait until you're sinking. God wants us to pray now. Don't wait until everything is in chaotic mood. No. God wants us to pray now. Jonah described, I really love verse 3. And I wish I had a whole sermon to break down verse 3. When he described what he goes through, I'll read it one more time. For thou hast cast me into the deep. The deep. That's how some of us in sin, deep. In the midst of the sea. And in the floods. And the floods come past me about all thy billows and thy waves pass over me. Lord of mercy, that's trouble. Imagine yourself in the whale. Imagine blood is all over you and you're between the light, the liver, all the things in your face and you can't move your hand. You're squashed up. All you have to do is send up SOS prayer. Help me, Lord. Help me. Mercy. That's when you're going to pray. When you're squashed up and about to die. That's when you want to pray. When God give us the opportunity now. While we're above surface. While we're above grounds to pray. Listen, verse 4. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Lord of mercy. He said, Lord, don't forget me. Lord, even though you're not seeing me, Lord, I love you. It's confession. He said, Lord, I've been disobedient. Lord, don't cast me away. Don't take me away from your presence, Lord. Lord of mercy. Look at verse 5. The waters come past me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Lord, Lord. Now you're getting a little bit of picture of his prayer. He's telling God what God already know. God is sitting down and saying, you got yourself right there. Everything wrapped around him. The weed wrapped around him and he's breathing still. What a God we serve. What a mighty rock. He won't give us more than we can bear. What other miracle can you see that a man is in the bottom of the whale, in the bottom of the sea, and still breathing? He's only God. Some of us is going through troublous time. But God is keeping us afloat. God is keeping us alive still for a purpose. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Jonah was sending up SOS prayer. He was praying from his heart. And verse 6 it says, I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. O oh Lord my God. What fervent prayer. What deep prayer. What deep prayer he was praying. He was calling out to God. I'm telling you, he was telling the Lord, Lord, you know, I should have prayed before you sent me to Joppa. I should have prayed before I went to the ship. I should have prayed before I went into the sea. Lord, I wait too long to pray. Have mercy. What can we learn from this? We have to ask the Lord for mercy before it's too late. We got to fall on our knees and start to pray before it's too late. 
I'm telling you, he was sending up prayer and said, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. I need your help. And verse 7, it says, When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. My prayer came in unto thee, unto thine holy temple. How was he praying? How do you pray when you are in distress? When it's coming from the heart, deep inside, how do you pray? Verse 8, he says, They that observe lying vanity, forsaken their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that thou that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. God will bring us to a point of confession. God will bring us to a point. That's what's going to happen in the last days. When the new Jerusalem comes down. And when the Lord plays before our faces. Why we did not make it. Anyone that is going to be lost. And when they see the appeal of God appealing to them. They're going to come to the conclusion and say, I deserve it. Even when you look and see the new Jerusalem, when you see the lords of lords and the kings of kings sitting on the white horse, when you see the streets of gold, and when you're looking from outside in, and you say, Lord of mercy, but it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. God is bidding us to pray right now without ceasing. God is bidding us. When Jonah recognizes, he says, Lord, I will do thy vow. I will be obedient. He confess. Many of us won't get the chance as Jonah. Jonah was called on a mission, and he had to accomplish the mission. Some of us already turned down the mission the Lord has called us for. The Lord has been giving you visions and vision. The Lord wants to use you. But you kept turning it down and say, I'm not ready. If I could only get married first. Different direction. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. I'm telling you, the Lord is calling his people to fervent prayer. Like these three powerful prayer warriors. They found themselves in situation and they prayed. But God is saying, what if you pray before? you get into the bottom of the sea. What if you pray before you get into the whale's belly? What if you pray before? How powerful it would be. How powerful God will answer us if we only pray before. There's a sermon that I remember I did, pray before you go. If you only pray before, God will use us mightily. He's calling us as we close, brethren. God is calling us to pray. It's no time to joke around. The church is turning upside down with different belief system and all different schism coming into the church. But God is saying, stay in the word. There's no new doctrine. There's no new ideas. Everything was there before. Thus saith the Lord. God is saying to his people tonight, repent. Before you get into the bottom of the whale. Because that whale may not spot you out again. You may not come out of the belly of that whale. You may die and go to a Christless grave. God is appealing to all those who are watching. And said tonight is the night of salvation. Tonight we need to take the Lord seriously. And come to the mercy seat. David recognized it. He recognized that the only mercy to get is from Jesus. The devil wants us dead. We can't turn to him. We have to turn to Jesus Christ. High and lifted up. Tonight as I pray, you want to come higher with the Lord. You want the Lord to do something to transform you tonight. You recognize that you don't want to go into the bottom of the whale. You don't want the Lord to take you to the extreme to save you. It's better now if we surrender while there's time. 
There's a time coming when time is going to be no more. When he's going to say, let the just be just. Let those who are unjust be unjust. When our probation is going to close. God is asking you, where do you stand? Are you going to wait like in the days of Noah? He preached for 120 years. People watch him and it become custom. Everybody passed Brother Noah preaching every day until the Lord shut the door of the ark, until the probation closes. Are you going to be an Adventist for 30 years? And the Lord says, depart from me, I never know you. What are you going to do? The time is ticking. It's almost five minutes to midnight. The midnight cry is going to go out. That the bridegroom is here. What are you going to do, brethren? Are you going to sit down and play church? Are you going to surrender and give everything over to Christ? I pray this night as we close, you want to stand with me? I'm going to pray. If this is your desire, you want to be saved. You want Christ to do something for you right now. You're standing on your feet. I'm going to pray right now and ask the Lord to save us in his kingdom. Heavenly angels are looking down. The Lord already opened the sanctuary. The heavenly beings are looking down and rejoicing. If God could open some people's eyes, you are standing in your home. God is seeing you. You want to surrender, stand where you are. If you're driving, pull over and stand. The great God sees you. If you're on the prayer line, stand up. God is about to do something powerful. I'm going to pray and I'm praying in faith. I'm praying like a, a, a Jabez. I'm praying like a Jonah. I'm praying like a David. God is able as his Holy Spirit fall. Let us pray, Father in heaven, great God whom we serve, the righteous and powerful God who is the I am. We come to you now, Lord, as we approach your mercy seat. There's none like you. Oh God, we surrender everything. We surrender our will, our desire over to you, God. Because you are our God. You are our shepherd. You are our El Shaddai. There's nowhere else to turn but to you. Your blood was shed on the cross for every one of us in the sanctuary. Everyone that is listening. Oh God, hear your people tonight. As we cry out to you and say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon your people tonight, O oh God. As we pray, O oh God, have mercy. Make notes, O oh God, of every individual who are watching. Every individual who are listening. I pray that you will dispatch an angel from heaven with mighty power, mighty sword, a fire in his hands. And I pray that you will touch every lips of your people and you will make us whole because we are willing. And Lord, you said if earthly fathers knows how to give good gifts, what about our heavenly father? So Lord, as we surrender to you, we know that you have touched everyone in every homes, Lord. And your righteousness is here. We appreciate it, O oh God, and we thank you for the great transforming of your power. We receive it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I pray that you will seal it up, bind it with your power, and we declare, declare and decree that everything is sealed and done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, praise you, exalt you. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. I just want to say thanks again for watching. Thanks for praying for us. God is doing a mighty work. You're going to notice a lot of transformation in your heart. It's not about me. It's all about Christ high and lifted up. Until then, I am Patrick Baker from the Button to Christ Ministry. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching this program. We hope that you were blessed. 
to further your support with us, please consider giving a donation at buttontochrist.com or .org. Any amount is appreciated and will be used for the continued growth of our ministry and the spreading of the gospel to the world. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time.